Hello， 各位同学，大家好，我是黄雅玲，欢迎收看今天的英语绘画第，我们的英语绘画二第一讲工作篇一的转播。今天呢，我们所要讲授的内容呢，包含了说，哎，找工作、填写履历表等等的内容。对话的内容呢，我们会以短句的方式来秀给各位同学看。同样的，在短句开始之前呢，我们还是会先进行该篇短句中所会使用到的一些单字的解释。在知道了单字的意思之后呢，当我们在看对话的时候，就可以比较快的清楚知道内容了。好，那我们现在先来看看我们对话中所会使用到的这些单字。OK， number one， puzzle， puzzle， 动词，使迷惑，使困惑。来看一下我们的例句。He looked a little puzzled. He looked a little puzzled. 他看上去呢有点困惑。Number two, substantially, substantially, 副词，相当多的，大大的。来看一下我们的例句。The price may go up quite substantially. The price may go up quite substantially. 价格呢可能会大大的上扬。Number three, look for, look for, 寻找。来看一下我们的例句。So there you are. We've looked all over for you. So there you are. We've looked for all over for you. 他说：“哎，原来你在那儿啊！我们到处在找你呢。” Next license. License. 名词，执照、牌照。来看一下我们的例句。We are applying for license to sell wine. 我们呢正在申请执照卖酒。Okay, next advertisement. Advertisement, 名词，广告，宣传。来看一下我们的例句。Advertisement helps to sell goods. 广告呢有助于推销商品。Next. Recruitment, recruitment, 名词，征人，补充。来看一下我们的例句。You should check out some online job recruitment sites. 你应该呢试试那些线上征人的网页。好，下一个 ，helpful, helpful， 形容词，有帮助的，有益的。来看一下我们的例句。It's always helpful to be well informed. 消息灵通呢，总是有益的。On the right track. On the right track. 正确的道路。来看一下例句。You are on the right track. 你现在的行为是正确无误的。Next. Go for it. Go for it. 你能试试看。这个 go for it 呢，是一个相当正面、很鼓励的一句话，也是很口语的一种用法。我们来看一下我们的例句。他说到呢 ，I think you are just the right person for the position. Just go for it. 他说，我相信你非常适合这个职位，放手去争取吧。Okay, next, draw up. Draw up, 起草制定。来看一下我们的例句。He has drawn up a vacation plan. 他呢已拧出了一个假期的计划。Determinate, determinate, 名词，决定因素。来看一下我们的例句。To study hard is the most important determinant to pass the exam. 认真读书呢，是决定你能不能通过考试的最重要因素。Worthy. Worthy. 形容词，冗长的。来看一下我们的例句。I think your assignment is too worthy. 我认为呢，你的作业写的太过于冗长了。Okay, next, 
big headed, big headed， 形容词，自大的。来看一下我们的例句 ：I couldn't stand you anymore. You are too big headed. 我再也没有办法忍受你了，你这个自大狂。Okay, next, bear, bear. 动词忍受，来看一下我们的例句。I cannot bear to see you like this. 我不忍见你这样。Okay, next vacancy. Vacancy 名词，空缺。来看一下我们的例句。We have a vacancy for a programmer. 我们呢有一个电脑城市设计师的一个缺额。好，单字的部分呢，我们就先介绍到这个地方。接下来，请大家跟我一起来观赏一下这则简短的话句。You look quite puzzled and worried. What's the matter? The news said that in the next academic year, the tuition fee will go up quite substantially. Hey, cheer up! There was nothing to be worried about. How about find a part-time job in your summer vacation? Therefore, you will have some money to pay it. What a good idea! So, what kind of job are you looking for? Hmm. I still have some classes in the university during summer vacation, so part-time job might be suitable for me. Well. So how about working in a convenience store, a supermarket, or fast food restaurant, or something else interesting? Interesting? For example, last year, you got the license of lifeguard. Working as a lifeguard in swimming pool might be a good idea, isn't it? Especially, there are many hotties who wear sexy bikinis. Wow. But I didn't find any swimming pool which post the job advertisement for lifeguard vacancy. You should check out some online job recruitment sites; they are very helpful. Now you're on the right track. Good luck, pal. Hey, wait! Here are some intern opportunities. Should I have a try? Yup, mate. Go for it. And you better drop your CV right away, because a CV is the most important determinant in job hunting. I see, but what should I write in my CV? Generally, at the top of the page, you should list your name, address, and contact details clearly. The following is your profile section in the skills, experiences, as well as your career goals. After this, you could put in your career history. You don't really have it though, so you could highlight your education history, the awards you received, the project you've done with other classmates, and references. If you have taken any responsibility in the students' union, don't forget to write it down and promote yourself by using this strength. And last but not least. Don't make your CV look too wordy. Shorter is even better. In addition, use bullet point rather than paragraphs. Wow, you're such an all-knowing person. You're telling me. Haha, <laughs> you're really something. But don't be big-headed, okay? By the way, do you have any CV sample for my reference? Hey, are we in the same generation? Just Google it. You'll find a plenty of information about it. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for your advice again. The last gentle reminder. Bear me. Hey, come on. I'm all ears. Every job is specific and has special requirements. So you should customize your CV for each job you apply for, as this is your chance to tailor your skills to the demand required. I see. By following your instructions, 
I'll do all my best to make it. Thank you so much, pal. How is it going on with your CV? It's almost done. Would you like to take a look? I'm impressed. I bet you have spared no effort to make it. Just send it to any of fast food restaurants and you'll get the job right away. Fast food restaurants? I made this for a vacancy of administration assistant in a travel agency. If so, I think there's something needs to be changed. Thanks for reminding me of that. I'll think it through before sending it off. Good. After reading the short story, I don't know if you can clearly understand what the short story is saying. If you don't understand, it's okay. We'll now read it one by one and read it slowly. Let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin. Okay, so Sam is watching news and signing. Sam, he's reading the news and he's reading the news. He says, Hey Tom, you look quite puzzled and worried. What's the matter? Tom asks him, Come, you look very worried and worried. What's the matter? Sam says, The news says that in the next academic year, the tuition fee will go up quite substantially. The next academic year, the tuition fee will go up quite substantially. The next academic year, the tuition fee will go up quite substantially. So Tom says, Hey, cheer up. There was nothing to be worried about. He said, "Relax, don't worry." Let's look at "cheer up" this word. We say "cheer up" to encourage someone to do something. If you face a feeling of not having any expectations and a low mood, you can say to your friend, "Hey, cheer up." You can say, "Hey, to make an extra effort," or "cheer up." These are all used to encourage someone to do something. Okay, let's continue to our conversation. 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 He said, "How about find a part-time job in your summer vacation? Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He said, "Better in summer vacation to find a part-time job in your summer vacation. Therefore, you will have some money to pay it." He 他说：“你打算找怎样的工作呢 ？”Sam says, "Hmm, I still have some classes in the university during summer vacation, so part-time job might be suitable for me." 那暑假的时候还是有一些暑休，所以打工比较适合。来，我们来看一个 suitable 的这个补充。第一个，我们说到 suitable 呢，它不能用来修饰人。来看一下例句，他说 ：“He was just not suitable for the job.” 他就是不适合这个工作。同意呢？我们来看一下跟 suitable 很相似的一些单词，像是 suitable、appropriate 跟 proper 这三个单词，我们都是用来形容适当的、适合的。可是 suitable for 这个单词呢，我们多半会用来形容说跟工作有关系的一个情况。a proper 呢是适用于礼节是否恰当、是否合规则、规矩等等的东西。那大部分我们用来形容适当或者是恰当的单词呢，则会使用 appropriate。好，我们来看一下 appropriate。Suitable for something or somebody, or to do something 的时候呢，它含有什么样的意思？我们说 right or appropriate for a particular purpose or occasion。它表示的是说呢，在某个场合或某一件事情上面，这件事情是对的，是适合的。来看一下例句 ：Would now be a suitable moment to discuss my report？ 他说现在是一个恰当的时机，可以跟你来讨论一下我的报告吗？接下来我们看到 appropriate for or appropriate to， 它的意思呢，其实代表的是 suitable, acceptable, or correct for the particular circumstances。表示是说呢，哎，这是一个适当的一个对的时机，适当的机会呢，可以来在某一些特定的场合可以来使用的。来看一下例句 ：Jeans are not appropriate for a formal party。对一个正式的场合的 party 来讲呢，你穿牛仔裤是不恰当的。或者是第二个例句 ，The book was written in a style appropriate to the age of the children。这本书呢是写给是写给适合这个年纪的孩子念的书，是很恰当的。接下来我们看到 proper，proper proper 的意思是 appropriate for condition or purpose or occasion。
or a person's character's needs 这样子，它代表是呢，是一个在一个机会里面是适当的，在一个机会、一个场合、一个地点或者是一个人物的他的这些需求的时候呢，我们可以使用到 proper 这个单字。来看一下我们的例句，他说 ，Is everything in the proper place？ 他说，所有事情都在这个对的地方，都在适当的位置了吗？好，我们再回到我们对话的部分。我们提到他说 ，Tom 就说到了 ，Well, so how about working in a convenience store, a supermarket, or a fast food restaurant? 他说，那你有没有想过在便利商店、在超商或者是在素食店工作呢 ？Or maybe something else interesting? 那还是有没有其他什么是你有兴趣的一些地方？我们来对 interesting 做一个小小的补充。Interesting 呢，我们可以用来指人或者是指物，都是代表着有趣的意思，是代表那种可能只是引发你的兴趣，但不一定会让人享受的。来看一下例句 ：The teacher is interesting。这个老师呢很有趣，或者是第二个例句 ：The book I saw last night was rather interesting。我昨天念的那本书呢还蛮有趣的。接下来我们看 fun。Fun 呢，可以用来指某样东西其好玩的成分呢，带有让你享受在其中的意味。来看一下例句 ：The zoo is so much fun。动物园实在太好玩了。或者是第二个例句 ：I had fun in the party。我在我在那个 party 里面呢，我有很快乐，我享受到了一些快乐，这样子。好，我们再回到我们对话的部分。So Sam says, "Interesting, for example." 他说：“你可以举例看看呐、啊。”Tom says, "Last year you got the license of lifeguard. Working as a lifeguard in a swimming pool might be a good idea, isn't it?" 他说：“你去年不是考到了一个救生员这个 lifeguard 的执照吗？”他说：“在游泳池畔当救生员应该是不错的主意吧。”Especially when there are many hotties who wear sexy bikinis. 尤其是当现场有很多穿着性感比基尼的辣妹的时候，应该是很不错的吧。So Sam says, "Wow, but I didn't find any swimming pools which post the job advertisement for lifeguard vacancy." 他说：“可惜呢，我并没有看到有哪间游泳池有在征救生员的。” Tom says, "You should check out some online job recruitment sites. They are very helpful." 那你应该试试看那些线上征人的网页，他们非常的有帮助。So now Sam is promptly going to get his laptop and search some keywords for job, for job information. 他说 Sam 呢就立刻来利用了这个笔记型电脑来做了这些关键字的查询。Tom says, "Now you are on the right track. Good luck, Paul." 他说这么做就对啦，祝你好运。Sam says, "Hey, wait." Here are some intern opportunities. Should I have a try? 他说，哎，这里有一些这种实习的机会，我应该试试看吗 ？Tom says, "Yep, Matt, go for it. And you'd better draw up your CV right away because a CV is the most important determinant in job hunting." 他说，当然啦，去试试看吧。而且呢，你要好好的准备你的履历表。履历表呢，对于我们应征工作是一个非常决定性关键。Sam says, "I see, but..." What should I write in my CV? 他说，那我该在我的履历表中写些什么东西呢 ？Tom says, generally, at the top of the page, you should list your name, address, and contact details. Clearly, 这样子。他说，大致上来说，你必须要在履历表最上面清楚地调列出你的姓名、地址、联络资讯等等东西。The following is your profile section. In the skills, experience, as well as your career goals. After that, you could put in your career history. You don't really have to have it though. 好，接下来呢，你可以放上关于你的技能啊、相关经验等等的东西。之后呢，也可以放上你的工作经验。可是这不是必要的。You could highlight your education history. The awards you received, the projects you have done with other classmates, and references. 你也可以特别强调你的教育背景，或者是获得的奖啊，曾经做过的一些计划，还有相关。If you have taken any responsibilities in the in the students' union, don't forget to write it down and 
prompt yourself by using this strength. 那如果你曾经在学生会担任过什么职务的话呢，也要记得把它写进来，来为你的履历来加分。And last but not least, don't make your CV look too wordy. Long winded, shorter is even better. In addition, use bullet points rather than paragraphs. 那最后呢，不要让你的履历表看起来太过于冗长或太迂回。精短简要是最重要的一件事情。除此之外呢，条列式也会写得比分段来得好。So Sam says, "Wow, you are such an all-knowing person." 真是个什么都知道的人呐、啊。Tom says, "You are telling me." 这还用你用得着你说吗 ？Sam laughs and says, "You are really something, but don't be big-headed." OK， 他说你真的很了不起，但不要因为这样子来出现了大头症的症状。我们来对 big headed 做一个小小的补充。我们说 big headed 等于呢是说一个 an exaggerated opinion of one's importance， 表明一个夸大的强调某人的重要性。当然，这也可以用来强调说某人对自己的过分自信。你也可以讲说它是 arrogance。好，我们再回到我们对话的部分。By the way, do you have any CV samples for my reference? 他说：“那你有没有一些履历表的一些范例呢 ？”Tom says, "Hey, are we in the same generation? Just Google it. You will find a plenty of information about it." 他说：“你去网络上查询一下，你就可以找到一大堆跟这相关的资讯了吧？”来对 plenty of 做一个小小的解释。Plenty of 呢是属于那种后面接可数名词，你也可以接不可数名词的一种量词。来看一下例句。He has plenty of money. 他很有钱，他有很多钱。我们也可以讲他是 He has much money. 或者是第二个例句 He has plenty of friends. 他有很多朋友。你也可以讲说这是 He has many friends. 接下来我们来做一个补充，就是关于是同时在可数名词以及不可数名词中都可以使用的量词，像是 all of, some, most of, enough. A lot of, plenty of, 还有 a lack of. 好，再回到我们对话的部分。Yeah, Sam says. Yeah, thanks for your advice again. 他说是啊，再次谢谢你的建议了。So now Sam is keying in keywords again. 他又在查询那些东西。Then Tom says, "The last gentle reminder, bear me." 他说，哦，请容许我再给你最后最后一个良心的建议吧。Sam says, "Hey, come on! I'm all ears." 他说，你说吧，我洗耳恭听。Tom says, "Every job is specific and has special requirements. 每个工作呢都是特别的，而且有时候会有特殊的需求。So you should customize your CV for each job you apply for, as this is your chance to tailor your skills to the demands required." 所以呢，你必须要为每份应征的工作量身打造你的履历表，来根据工作的需求呢，来强调你的技能。Sam says, "I see. By following your instructions, I will do all my best to make it. Thank you so much." 他说，哎，根据你这样解说，我一定会尽我所能的做到最好的。非常的感谢你这样子。So now Sam is searching for some CV samples and keeping writing. Sam 呢，现在就在网络上搜寻一些范例，然后开始在持续写他的履历表。And then few days later, Tom met Sam again. Tom says, "How's it going on your CV?" 他说，那你履历表进行的怎么样了呢 ？Sam says, "Well, it's almost done. Would you like to take a look?" 他说，哎，快要好了，想看一下吗 ？So while Tom's reading, after that, Tom says, "Wow, I'm impressed. I bet you have spared no effort to make it." 他说：“我非常的佩服你，我打赌你非常的努力了。”来，我们来对 “spare no effort” 做一个小小的补充。这个 “spare no effort to do something” 呢，并不是表示说你一点努力都不做，并想轻松获得好处。相反的 ，“spare no effort to do something” 呢，等于是说 “to work as hard as possible to achieve something”， 非常努力的去得到某一些东西。来看一下例句。Emergency services have spared no effort to help people whose homes were destroyed by the tornadoes. 
他说：“这个紧急这个救援中心呢，他们非常的努力在帮助这些人。哪些人？这些家里面被龙卷风摧毁掉的这些人。好，我们再回到我们对话的部分。So just send it to any fast food restaurants, and you will get a job right away. 他就说了，哎，你直接把它寄给任何一间素食餐厅吧，你一定马上就可以找到工作的。But then was surprised. Fast food restaurants." I made this for a vacancy of administration and assistant in a travel agency. 他说我这份是为了应征旅行社的行政助理的耶。Tom says, "If so, I think there is something needs to be changed." 他说如果是这样的话呢，我想你应该要稍微修改一下内容。Sam says, "Thanks for reminding me of that. I will think it through and before sending it off." 他说：“多谢你的提醒，我在寄出前会再想过一遍的。”好，那我们现在先休息一下，我们今天就先唱到这个地方，先休息一下。Yeah. 好，欢迎回来。今天的课程呢，我们就上到这个地方结束了。不知道各位还记不记得今天我们上了哪些东西？对话中呢，唱提到了撰写履历表 resume 的时候呢，必须要 list your name, address, and contact details clearly。接下来关于你的 skills, experiences, or career history 也可以写上去做一个补充。And then we could also highlight the education history, the awards, and the projects we have done with other classmates and references. 这些东西都可以补充上去。但是最重要的就是 ，don't make your CV looks too wordy. Shorter is even better. 而今天呢，我们也做了许多的补充，像是说想要鼓励一个人振作的时候，我们可以说 Hey, cheer up， 或者是说 To make an extra effort or cheer up。我们也做了 suitable, appropriate 跟 proper 这三个单字的比比较的一些补充。虽然说呢，这三个单字都是用来形容适当的、适合的，但 suitable for 多半会用来形容跟工作有关系的一些情况。Proper 呢，适用于合乎礼节或者规则、规矩等等。大部分我们最常使用到的单字还是 appropriate。我们也做了 interesting， 还有呢像是 fun 的这两个单字的比较。我们前者这个 interesting 呢是用来引发兴趣，但不一定能让人享受其中。这个后者这个 fun 呢，则是某样东西其好玩的成分，带有让你享受其中的意味。接下来我们也提到的常说的大头症这个 big headed。还有像是可以同时使用在这个可数名词跟不可数名词的量词的东西，像是 all of、some、most of、enough、a lot of、plenty of and a lot of。最后呢，我们也提到这个 spare no effort to do something， 并不是像字面上我们所讲的这种完全不努力的意思。相反的 ，spare no effort to do something 呢，它表示的是 to work as hard as possible to achieve something， 是非常努力想要达到某个目标。那我们今天呢，就先上到这个地方了。我们下一次呢，会进行这个英语绘画第二讲，工作篇二。下周呢，我们会讲到的是关于一些面试的一些小介绍。面试呢，我们面试的时候要准备什么东西，要干什么，会有一些哪一些东西是特别需要注意到的。这些呢，我们下次都会慢慢的讲到。好，那如果说这样子的话呢，我们就差不多是这个样子了。那我们下次见啦，拜拜。